Assembly Bill 2 by Assembly Member Alejo and Acting to Economic Development. Senator Canella. Thank you, Mr. President. AB 2 will allow certain blighted areas to create a new entity called the Community Revitalization Investment Authority to work towards tackling issues faced by our state's most disadvantaged communities. In 2011, the state uh, dissolved its redevelopment agencies, driven primarily by the cost of redevelopment to the state's general fund, but the needs of struggling communities did not go away. AB2 will work to change this by investing property tax increments of consenting local agencies, other than schools, to imp improve our local communities. This will grow jobs, reduce crime, repair deteriorating and inadequate infrastructure, clean up brownfields and promote affordable housing. This bill also requires 25% of the funds to be set aside for affordable housing and will help rebuild impoverished communities across the state. If we don't fix our, uh, fix our existing neighborhoods, then costly city problems like traffic will worsen. The bill has received bipartisan support and is supported by the host of cities, the California Chamber of Commerce, CBIA, and housing advocates. I respectfully ask for an I vote. Thank you, Senator Canella. Uh, members, debate or discussion? Senator Nielsen, would you like to speak to this issue? Thanks, Senator. Senator Nielsen. Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen of the Senate, this is the resurrection of the redevelopment agencies, the failed redevelopment agencies. Now, they worked in some areas, some areas that were, I was privileged to represent. But they also did a great disservice by the vast accruing of revenues that they utilized to usurp private property and put it to what they declared might be a better use, as if it were their choice all the time to be a better use. They absolutely exploited and will continue to exploit under the provision to this bill the seizure of private property under eminent domain, whereby they will seize that property, allow another than property owner to develop it, enjoying the boon of getting it on the cheap. Any reforms needed to be inculcated in such legislation that would resurrect and not allow the excesses of these redevelopment agencies. Sadly, this bill does not accomplish that purpose. And somehow or another, in the years since those redevelopment agencies went out of existence, doesn't seem like California cities fell into precipitous decline. Seems like we're surviving. But I entreat my colleagues not to resurrect the redevelopment agencies without the needed reforms to keep them under control and to contain them, and not to allow them to run roughshod over private property in California, or to reward certain interests, letting them develop as would be the will of some local community. I urge a no vote. Thank you, Senator Nielsen. Senator Huff. Members, I rise in support of this measure. You know, when uh, this legislature was in the process of extinguishing redevelopment, Senator Rod Wright and myself led the challenge, we led the charge to protect redevelopment because it was one of the few economic developments the cities had, and it was also one of the few, few ways to generate revenue for our affordable housing. But against our efforts, we killed redevelopment. Now those agencies had eminent domain, and while there was a lot of scare stories going around, there had been very few uses of eminent domain. Um, and in fact, in this version of trying to resurrect an economic development tool for our local communities, it does have amendments that allow for community input. And if a majority of them say no, they can't bring it up for a period of time. So it has more oversight than the old agencies had. And it was always our desire that you fix the things that were wrong with redevelopment rather than kill it. But that's history. Now we have an opportunity to give economic development tool to our local agencies. 
And if there are abuses in it, then we as a legislature ought to fix it again. But we have to get something for them. There are deteriorating cities. There are de deteriorating parts of cities that need some tool to revitalize them. This is the method to do it. I urge your I vote. Thank you, Senator Huff. Further debate or discussion? Seeing none, Senator Canella, would you like to close? Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I understand some of the concerns with redevelopment. I can say as a public official, I was on the Planning Commission, City Council, and Mayor, we use eminent domain exactly zero times. So I don't think it's widely being abused, but we certainly need to be careful when we use eminent domain. And this AB2 does not change Prop 99 that passed in 2008 with over 62% of the vote, which prohibits the ability of a public agency to take a single family home for economic development purposes. So I know we get fearful about eminent domain, I certainly understand that, um, but I don't see it being abused. Secondly, cities have no tools whatsoever for investment in their community. Redevelopment was really the only tool. Now that we've taken that away, most cities have a majority of their general fund that goes towards public safety purposes. Very little is left to invest in their community. This is a voluntary program. If the districts don't want to participate, they don't have to participate. So I, I wish this went much further. I wish we could go back to the day that we killed redevelopment and bring it back because I thought it was an excellent program, but we can't. I think this is a good first step. Hopefully we can continue to grow uh, this Def this measure and expand the opportunities for city w cities. With that, I respectfully ask for an I vote. Thank you, Senator Canella. We will we'll be announcing the, the vote on this uh, measure. Secretary, please call the vote. Allen? Aye. Aye. Anderson? No. no. Bates? No. no. Bell? Aye. Aye. Berryhill? Aye. Aye. Block? Aye. Aye. Canella? Aye. Aye. De Leon? Fuller? Gaines? No. No, Galgiani. Aye. Aye, Glazer. Hall. Aye, Aye Hancock. Aye. Aye, Hernandez. Aye, Aye Hertzberg. Aye, Hill. Aye, Aye Hueso. Aye. Aye, Huff. Jackson. Aye, Jackson. Aye, Aye Lada. Leno. Aye, Aye Leva. Aye. Aye, Lou. McGuire. Aye, Aye Mendoza. Aye, Aye Mitchell. Aye, Aye Monning. I Morlock. No, Morell. No, Wynn. Nilsson. No, Pan. I Pavley. I Roth. I Runner. I Stone. Vidak. No. Wykowski. I Walk. Walk I. Stone, no. Wynn, no. Secretary called absent members. Glazer, aye. De Leon. Fuller. Lada. Lou. Aye. Ayes 28, noes 9. Measure passes. Members, we're now going to move to file item 146, Senator Bates. Secretary, please read. Assembly Bill 388 by Assemblymember Chang and Act Relating to Housing. Great. Senator Bates. Thank you, um, Mr. President and members. This bill previously passed uh, our floor 40 uh, to 0. There were minor, minor technical amendments needed to clarify the language of the bill. You'll find those on page 5, line 16 of the bill itself. I ask once again for your I vote. Thank you, Senator Bates. Debate or discussion? Members, would there be any objection to unanimous roll call? Seeing and hearing none, ice 38, no zero, measure passes. We'll now move on to file item 147. Senator Bates, Secretary, please read. Assembly Bill 759 by Assembly Member Linder and Act Relating to Recreational Vehicles. Senator Bates. Thank you, Mr. President. Members, AB 759 by Assembly Member Linder clarifies the operations of the new Motor Vehicle Board and its oversight of automobile and RV franchise agreements. 
while AB 759 is primarily a technical code cleanup bill, it makes one substantive change to current law. It authorizes the common industry practice of RV dealers selling remaining units after a franchise agreement has ended. It, AB 759 is the product of multiple meetings with stakeholders passed unanimously throughout the process with no opposition. I respectfully ask for your I vote. Thank you, Senator Bates. Members, debate or discussion? Seeing none. Members, any objection to unanimous roll call? Seeing and hearing none. Ice 38, no zero, measure passes. Now I'm gonna move um, to file item 148, Senator Pavley. Secretary, please read. Assembly Bill 1390 by Assembly Member Alejo and Act relating to groundwater. Senator Pavley. Uh, yes, thank you very much, uh, members. Uh, as most of you have been aware, um, Assembly Member Alejo and I have, have both um, been working together on uh, similar bills and the topic main, mainly on groundwater adjudication. Uh, we had hearings last year, informational hearings that showed that we need to expedite the process and get rid of some of the time sinks on groundwater adjudication. Uh, those kinds of reductions in time sinks, frankly, when you go through adjudication of a groundwater basin, determining who gets how much water with all the overlying property owners, it's a lawyer's dream. It takes about 20 years and counting to sometimes go through that process. We think with these reforms, it will be quicker regarding notification and other parts. But let's look what's in this bill. This bill by Assembly Member Aleo is a bipartisan bill. It's sponsored by the uh, California Farm Bureau and has the support of Cal Chamber and Western Growers. It's a bill that'll bring new efficiency to the process of adjudicating ground water rights in groundwater basins. AB 1390 is an Assembly Member Aleo's companion bill to my Senate Bill 226, and it's been uh, wonderful working with his office, both of which have been extensively negotiated between my office, the Assembly Member's office, the administration has signed off on these amendments, agricultural interests, water agencies, and others. When the governor signed the Sustainable Groundwater Management Act, or SIGMA, last year, there was an interest by all to work on streamlining the adjudication process, and we've done just that. The goal of AB 1390 is to clarify court procedures that apply to comprehensive groundwater adjudications to reduce the time and improve the efficiency of the process, thus reducing costs. Specific provisions of the bill will encourage early settlement to avoid undue disruption of local groundwater planning the bill has received unanimous bipartisan support through the process. I respectfully ask for your aye vote. Um, my bill and Assembly Member Aleo's bills will be uh, joined together. Um, and I look forward to your, the passage of this bill by Assembly Member Aleo. Thank you, Senator Pavley. Senator Nielsen. Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen of the Senate, uh, the present legislation in my opinion, is a product of the failures of the past. Sustainable groundwater legislation that passed a little over a year ago, and really in the dark of night, without thorough reviewing or without thorough committee hearings, created a huge problem for our formerly fairly sacred groundwater in California. We certainly do have a groundwater challenge in California. Drought has contributed to the decline of it. Pumping has contributed to the decline of it. And the lack of surface storage, which we have yet to address, has contributed to that. But what has happened over the last two years in drought-related legislation, this legislature has given agencies of government dictatorial control over both surface and groundwater. Surface water in drought legislation year before last that empowered the Water Board to usurp even pre-1914 water rights and long-standing senior water rights, which has now happened. Commendably, the Board has attempted to do that with restraint, 
but to the point of groundwater. Finally, deficiencies were found in many organizations that are now flying around this building opposing this legislation did not object to those former bills. In fact, even some supported it. And we're nowhere to be found all of this early year in committee hearing after committee hearing where I raised these very issues that I'm raising here on the floor. And I would look out over the audience for some of the colleagues that should be supporting the position I was taking, and I saw no one. Kind of reminds me of a biblical verse, and I saw no one. It was a pretty lonely time. Well, this particular bill does at least make an attempt related to our groundwater. And let me put it simply. Would you, as a private property owner, one with an agricultural, a domestic, an industrial well, or one even with a municipal well, and the cities better not think they're going to be exempt from the water police because they're coming your way too. Would you rather go to an agency of government to argue your case or to a court of law? I, most assuredly, these days would opt for a court of law because many agencies have now put themselves above the law. And this does pr permit an adjudicatory process whereby the landowner can assert their rights now, there are still water code, pr code provisions that I've studied and talked to water attorneys about that give us comfort, even in terms of what had happened last year. But this is an attempt to, if you will, get the private property owner an open venue into the courts to d defend, if not protect, their groundwater rights. It is indeed a step in the right direction. It sets in place what I would call procedures for a comprehensive adjudication, considering many, many issues that most assuredly should be considered, such as such any action related to those rights to extract the water from underneath your gland minimally interferes with the timely completion and implementation of a groundwater management plan, the sustainable plans that I've talked about. There's a lot of very careful language that has been negotiated and a lot of very fine water attorneys that have dedicated their energies. And I, uh, I believe that it's well worthy of support. And some of the frenzy of activity here in the last dying moments of this session uh, would be amusing if they, if they weren't uh, blameworthy. Blameworthy as in, where were you when we needed you? Well, let's just say this is an attempt to take it back, to roll back some of the excesses of the legislation, the sustainable ground, groundwater management plan last year. And keep in mind, one of the fundamental tenets of that legislation last year was local control, local control. Now understand groundwater has always been the subject and the purview of local control and of the, the, the right to, to the water underneath your property. It's a little bit different than a private property right, but it is a sacred right nonetheless. But local government were the controlling powers. And last year's legislation made much of saying that, oh, this is about local control, when it wasn't. Because if the state doesn't like your local plan, guess who has the final say? the state, the agencies of government. I submit, if I'm going to roll my dice for my land and my property and my water, these days, I'd rather roll the dice for the court than the state government agencies who, frankly, think they have, and in many cases do have, more power than your legislature and the court. I urge an I vote. Thank you, Senator Nielsen. Members, further debate or discussion? Seeing none, Senator Pavley, would you like to close? Uh, thank you very much. I want to thank uh, fellow bulldog from Fresno State, Senator Jim Nielsen, for his comments. And I think I'll use that in my close, but I just want to 
assure everyone that these bills are procedural. They do not interfere or alter groundwater rights and do not hit, uh, hinder the uh, groundwater management agency process. Senator Nielsen um, brings up some very good points and I appreciate his support on this measure. Ask for your I vote. Thank you, Senator Pavley. Uh, members, would there be any objection to unanimous roll call? Seeing and hearing none, ayes 39, no, zero. Measure passes. Right. Yep. Members, we're going to go back now to file item 140. Senator Runner, you prepared to bring this item forward? Secretary, please read. Assembly Bill 517 by Assemblymember Gallagher and Ackling to Sexual Health Education. Senator Runner. Hi, thank you, uh, Mr. President and members. Um, as a senator from San Diego, I uh, spoke about uh, when I first uh, told you about this bill, um, Planned Parenthood has sent out an alert uh, just yesterday, and they have, um, the author had take some, taken some language that they wanted removed, and that was this summer, and they've had plenty of time to talk to the author about another amendment, and they haven't done so, and we just heard about it today. And this bill is consistent with the current uh, education um, codes, and it's all about parents' ability to have a knowledgeable conversation with their children, and they deserve that. Uh, whether it's Planned Parenthood, uh, HIV educators, or even crisis pregnancy centers that are coming in off the uh, regular grid of their health education in their schools, I think parents need to know uh, what is happening and the ability to see who those people are that are coming to talk to their students and their children, and they should have the final authority whether they want their students in those classes or not. So I would urge an I vote, and again, it's been through all kinds of committees, had no uh, opposition until yesterday with this uh, new situation here. So I would urge an I vote. Thank you very much. Thank you, Senator Runner. Members, debate or discussion, Senator Mitchell. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, just to be clear, there are other organizations that are in opposition to the bill, uh, one of which is uh, the largest school district in the country, LAUSD. And as we've spoken earlier today about concerns around unanticipated costs, or costs in general, as we've talked about priorities, um, LAUSD, whose letter um, has been on file since September 3rd, talks about AB 517 creating administrative burdens on all California schools teaching sexual health or uh, education. Uh, permission to read, Mr. President? Permission to read, Mr. President? Absolutely. Thank you. Um, the letter states that the provisions of the bill allow for a parent or guardian, as we all know, of a student to make copies of sexual health education materials and mandates that school establish mechanisms to offset some of the costs. So we have a situation where we've got students in classes who don't have enough textbooks to go around, where we know our schools are strapped, but this bill would mandate that the schools make copies on site and available to parents based on this one curriculum. I hope, would wish that we would mandate that every student had an Algebra two book and all the other curriculum that they need um, um, that's probably much more critical to their uh, passing the KC uh, and getting their A through G pattern. Um, based on my school district's op opposition, based on their concerns of, of fiscal uh, concerns, uh, I will be voting no and ask others to consider doing the same. Thank you, Senator Mitchell. Further discussion, close. debate members? Can I close? Seeing none, Senator Runner, would you like to close? Thank you. Um, uh, senator from Los Angeles. Uh, actually, in this bill, the parents have to pay the 10 cents a copy to get the copy of that. They can take that and give it to them. Maybe the school districts will make money. I don't know. I don't know how many parents in my school district or yours will actually go to this trouble to do this. I mean, I don't expect it to be a lot. But I believe, as parents, they need to know what and who is coming to those classrooms and talking to their children 
outside of their regular health education and uh, classes uh, that need to do that. So uh, I would still appreciate an I vote. There is no appropriation. Got through appropriations in the Senate uh, with a 2880. Uh, so I would urge an I vote. Thank you very much. Thank you, Senator Runner. Secretary, please call the roll. Allen. Anderson. Aye. Bates. Aye. Aye Bell. No. no. Berryhill. Aye. Block. No. no. Canella. Aye. Aye. De Leon. Fuller. Aye. Aye. Gaines. Aye. Aye. Galgioni. No. Glazer. Hall. No. no. Hancock. No. Hernandez. Hertzberg. Hill, aye. aye. Wesso, no. no. Huff, aye. aye. Jackson, no. no. Lada, no. no. Leno, no. no. Leva, no. no. Lou, aye. McGuire, no. no. Mendoza, aye. aye. Mitchell, no. no. Monning, no. no. Morlock, yeah. aye. aye. Morell, aye. aye. Wynn, I Nilsson, I Pan, no. no Pavley, Roth, Runner, I Stone, I Vidak, I Wykowski, no Walk, Walk no. Secretary, please call the absent members. Allen, De Leon, Glazer, Hernandez, Hertzberg. Pavley, Roth. Senator Runner moves the call. Member, members, we're going to uh, lift the calls. We're going to start with file item 117. Secretary, please call. Oh, excuse me. Members, we're going back to file item 117. We're lifting the call. Secretary, please call the absent members. Barry Hill. Wachowski. I. Wolk. Wolk, I. Ayes 26, nose 13. Measure passes. File item 118. Secretary, please call the absent members. Monning. Aye. Ayes 40, no zero, measure passes. File item 119. Secretary, please call the absent members. Fuller. Aye. Hall. Aye. Monning. Aye. Wynn. Ayes 39, no zero, measure passes. File item 121. Secretary, please call the absent members. Anderson. De Le I. De Leon. Fuller. I. Hall. I. Monning. I. Wynn. I. I. Ice 39. No zero. Measure passes. File item 122. Secretary, Full please read. Or Fuller. Secretary, please call the absent members. I. Monning. I Morell. I Wachowski. I Win. I. Eyes 40, no zero, measure passes. File item 123. Secretary, please call the absent members. Fuller. I Leva. I Win. I Wachowski. I. Eyes 40, nose zero on the urgency. Eyes 40, nose zero on the measure. File item 124. Secretary, please call the absent members. De Leon, Fuller, 
No. Galjoni? Aye. Huff? No. Wynn? No. Wykowski? Aye. Aye. Ice 25, nose 14, measure passes. File item 125. Secretary, please call the absent members. De Leon, Fuller, Wykowski. Aye. 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 Fuller, aye. Ice 39, nose zero, measure passes. File item 127. Secretary, please read. Or please call the absent members. Anderson, Bates. Aye. Anderson, aye. Anderson, aye. De Leon, Fuller. Aye. aye. Mendoza. Aye. aye. Wykowski. Aye. aye. Ayes 38, nose one on the urgency. Ayes 38, nose one on the measure. File item 129. Secretary, please call the absent members. Jackson. Aye. aye. Pan. Aye. aye. Runner. Aye. Ice 40, no zero, measure passes. File item 130, Secretary, please call the absent members. Jackson. Aye. Aye. Mendoza. Aye. Ice 40, no zero, measure passes. File item 132, Secretary, please call the absent members. De Leon. Gaines. Hall. Aye. Aye. Huff. Jackson? Aye. Aye. Mitchell? Aye. Pavley? Aye. Runner? Runner, no. Ice 28, nose 9, measure passes. File item 134. Secretary, please call the absent members. De Leon? Huff? Pavley? Aye. Ice 38, no zero, measure passes. File item 135, Secretary, please call the absent members. De Leon, Hall. Aye. Aye, Pavley. Aye, Runner. Ice 34, nose four, measure passes. File item 136, Secretary, please call the absent members. Barry Hill. Aye. Galjani. Hall. Aye. Aye. Jackson. Aye. aye. Nielsen. Pavley. Galjani, aye. Pavley, aye. Ice 39, no zero, measure passes. File item 137. Secretary, please call the absent members. Anderson. Aye. Aye. Fuller. Hertzberg, Jackson, aye. aye, Pavley, aye. Ice 38, no zero, measure passes. File item 138, Secretary, please call the absent members. De Leon, Fuller, Glazer, Hertzberg, Jackson, aye, aye Pavley, aye, aye. Vidak, aye. aye. Glazer, aye. Ice 37, no zero, measure passes. File item 139, Secretary, please call the absent members. De Leon, Fuller, Galjoni, Hertzberg, Jackson, I, Morlock, I, Pavley, I. Galjoni, I, Hertzberg, I. Ice 26, nose 12, measure passes. File item 140, Secretary, please call the absent members. Allen, aye. De Leon, Glazer, Hernandez, Hertzberg, Pavley, Roth. Senator Runner moves the call. File item 142, Secretary, please call the absent members. De Leon, Fuller, Galjoni, Hall, uh, I. I. Hancock, I. I. Hueso, 
Aye. Leno? Aye. Aye. Mendoza? Aye. Calgoni, aye. aye. Mendoza, aye. Aye. Ice 38, no zero. Measure passes. All right, members, we are going to um, keep moving forward on the as assembly third reading until 540, at which time we will move to unfinished business and uh, we will conclude at six o'clock. So uh, let us um, begin with file item 149. Senator Hill, are you prepared to bring this measure forward? Secretary, please read.